Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I'd like to demonstrate the taking of a wax bite for our study models. Many times this is not even necessary. It is a very simple procedure, but I think we should understand the principles and the reasons why a wax bite is taken, and that'll help us in the taking of it. If we look to a set of study models, we'll find that uh, sometimes they cannot be occluded properly. Usually in dentistry, study models are taken for cases that have got occlusal problems, orthodontic problems, restorative problems, and we want to be able to take these home and study them at night in the quiet or sometime when we've got the records and x-rays, treatment plan uh, around and we like to have a copy of the mouth, but we need to know how these teeth come together. And if we can't articulate them directly, what we expect to do with study models is to set them on their backs and then slide them together. And at that stage, they should come together the same as they do in the mouth. If you take a, a close look at these, you'll find that uh, they do not, you know, occlude very good. This is one of the reasons this case is being worked on. Uh, clusal problems, orthodontic problems, uh, and we need to be able to have these together so that when we're studying them at night and drawing up a treatment plan, we can figure out where these particular teeth come together, and they need to come together on their back. The only way we have of trimming the model so that the backs are flush and proper occlusion is to have a wax bite. You can take a uh, set of models like these in which we have many missing teeth. These are frequently taken, probably the most common area taken, uh, for restorative purposes. And we have to figure out how these come together so that we can sit down and start to plan our restorative purposes as to whether we're going to you know, do partial dentures or bridges or other uh, reasons. So our wax bites sometimes are very essential. The most common way of taking the wax bite is utilizing pink base plate wax. If we were to take this and to warm it in a bowl of warm tap water, it generally will soften adequately so that we can use it for purposes of taking a bite. We'll have to trim it down and oftentimes a number seven wax spatula or most any spatula will be adequate and we can cut a section off that we feel we'll be utilizing. We're going to use two thicknesses of the pink base plate wax, so we'll want to fold it in half. Once we have it folded in half, we want to rewarm it again to get it up to proper temperature. Once we've got our proper temperature and our wax is relatively soft and it kind of comes like a, a wet noodle, it's very flexible, we want to form it basically into the form of an arch. Once we have that formed, then we can just lay it on the teeth, set it on the posterior bottom teeth, lower teeth, and then just bite on down, bite nice and firm and rather hard. And we'd want to bite into a centric occlusion, nice and firmly, and have them bite solidly all the way through. And then we'll just need to let that set for 30 to 60 seconds until it starts to harden. While it's hardening, let me show you a common problem that uh, occurs in the taking of wax bites. And this is in the trimming and cutting of it and the placement of it. Uh, we have to do a little thinking in terms of the wax bites or an attempt to relate the teeth together. And if we extend the wax bite back into the soft tissue in the posterior area, this is very soft tissue back there. And it distorts very easily. So that if we had a wax bite that extended well beyond the teeth into that soft area, when you put it in the mouth and have a patient bite on it, it is going to compress the tissues. The tissues are going to be squashed and displaced. When you put it onto the study models, these are made out of plaster now. They are taken with a soft impression material. They're not going to dis displace, and so we're going to have an interference that's going to prevent us from getting our wax to seat the teeth together properly. We really don't even need these posterior teeth. Uh, we're interested in relating the teeth together. If we got back uh, through the first molar or ended up one 
tooth short of the posterior area, this would be plenty of wax to get a proper bite. In fact, it would be much easier to get a bite and better to get a bite than it would be to extend posterior to the teeth. So whatever you do in your bite, don't extend posterior to the last tooth into the soft, movable, flexible, compressible tissues. Well, our wax should be firmed up now, so we'll just have open and slide it out. You have to be careful in sliding it out that we don't get distortions on them. And uh, that is basically all there is to a wax bite. Actually, one of the ways of determining whether this wax bite is uh, adequate or not is if you take and look at a wax bite, we should be able to see multiple holes through it. If you have an occlusion which is good or you're biting into a centric occlusion, you'll usually find many holes through the wax bite. If we have a wax bite in which we've just got uh, a couple perforations or minimal perforations when we should be getting more, we generally can figure we haven't got the wax into centric occlusion. We haven't bitten all the way through on it. A few additional pointers might tell you about and concerning taking of a wax bite. If you did get a wax bite too far posterior and get into the soft tissue area, this can be trimmed away simply by taking a knife and when the wax is chilled, actually cut the posterior off. Uh, one of the problems in doing that is that when you cut wax, you're going to cause a little bit of a furrow on each side of the wax. And if you look at it closely, you'll find that it's ridged up on each side of the wax here. You can get a close-up on that. We get a little bit of a ridge. The same thing occurs in your wax bite when you cut it, except uh, it's not as visible. But what you have to do is to take and to scrape that little raised furrow off of each side in order to uh, get the wax so it can set back on down properly again. Just as easy to take it, not overextended onto the soft tissue to begin with. If we were to consider other methods of taking wax bites, there are a whole variety of different uh, methods and materials. Some taken by using a uh, uh, kind of a horseshoe pallet, uh, which may offer a little less uh, flexibility to the wax. Wax itself, particularly this type of wax, has a tendency to uh, have a memory when it's put under stress and it wants to return back to its original shape. And if you find that after this wax has cooled or has been distorted maybe a little bit, taking it out of the mouth by the cheeks or has been in a hot and cold uh, atmosphere which causes these stresses to be released, it might be possible that you'd have to warm the wax a little bit before getting the teeth properly articulated again. We don't want to warm it up nearly as much, but it may be necessary to warm it just a little bit in order to get the occlusion to seat down in it in case there's been any stresses that have built up and we've had a little bit of distortion in the wax. Other methods for taking uh, wax bites would include uh, some of these preformed waxes, which are a little bit more expensive. This particular type wax, rather common wax, is a uh, softer wax than the base plate wax. It has copper particles impregnated in it for the purpose of uh, heating quicker, they feel. It also has a, uh, uh, a foil, which is in between the two layers of wax, which they feel will help to hold the wax together so that it won't uh, uh, be distorted under stress and things of this nature quite as easily. Uh, oftentimes, if these are too long, which they usually are, and you want to shorten them instead of trying to cut them with a knife, you can just take a pair of scissors and uh, trim the posterior off to the distance that you may want it. In some instances, we get involved in situations where, like this set of study models here, where the anterior teeth are actually biting right up into the palate. And to take a horseshoe type of uh, impression means that you're going to be compressing this wax against the hard palate. And uh, in instances where that occurred, we may want to just take tab uh, bites, where we would take wax tabs, with these little metal handles and uh, inserts that run through them, and warm them up, just lay them on the posterior teeth only, and have the patient bite on them. And then we would have a, a wax impression of the posterior teeth, and we wouldn't have this anterior at all that uh, would be compressing into the palate area. Some advantages to these is that uh, when the patient bites with this wax tab in the posterior, you generally can look and see whether 
the anterior teeth are coming together properly. You get a visual uh, relationship of whether the teeth are coming into the centric occlusion. If you have a full wax in there, you never really can get that visual relationship to be sure that they're exactly where you want them. Regardless of the particular method used for taking a wax bite, the important thing is to understand the principles for which we're looking for in a wax bite, and we should be able to accomplish our goals successfully. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.